an FIA plot consists of four subplots that make up about a sixth of an acre in total. They're randomly placed in a hexagonal grid that's about 6,000 acres in area. And this honeycomb grid covers the entire United States. By having Idaho Fish and Game go out and actually gathering data on our plots, we can marry the animal species data with the veg data and say with uh, a much more higher degree of confidence, this is what those species are using in our neck of the woods. So we have arrived at our FIA spot. And the first thing I'm gonna do is check our temperature logger this little mechanism right here, which will record the humidity and the temperature of this particular spot. So our primary focus is on species of greatest conservation need, which are lacking basic information. We're looking for gastropods, which are snails and slugs. We're looking for amphibians, frogs, and salamanders. We're looking for beetles. And FIA does the same type of inventory, but they do it with forest resources. So they're looking at tree species, forest type, uh, different structures, age classes, size classes of forest. We're at the first slug trap, which is cleverly hidden underneath all this duff. I'm gonna carefully remove this top layer. So instead of the Forest Service doing a project over here and us doing a project over there, we're working together, we're pooling our money, and the information we get from this is 10 times better than what we would get if we were working alone. Yeah, I think it's unprecedented, um, at least in this region, for a state agency to enter a collaborative uh, project with FIA of this magnitude hasn't been done before. National forests are managed under a multiple use objectives that includes the sustaining of biodiversity and, and natural ecosystems. And how do you do that if you don't know the status of the biodiversity, if you don't know the distribution of species, particularly rare species? So this project is instrumental in providing knowledge about the distribution, the abundance, the habitat relationships of species that are of concern uh, in management. So I've got a very small snail shell about a millimeter long. If we really want to come in and look at what's going on in an ecosystem, uh, looking at kind of the smaller, more numerous species is important for a lot of reasons. Insects or, or slugs and snails often have very narrow ecological requirements, very specific re needs in terms of their climate and the habitat, and are very sensitive indicators. And so they can provide you a much more sensitive measure of the condition of the landscape uh, based on their presence or absence or abundance. And, uh, and virtually nothing is known. So before we started this project, this species, the magnum mantle slug, had not been found in Idaho since 1948. But it turns out when we started going out and doing multi-species surveys, it's not the most common species on the landscape, but it's certainly out there and it's certainly widespread. Wouldn't it be nice if in all those years between 1948 and 2010, we'd actually been monitoring this species? We'd know its population trends, we'd know its habitat requirements, we'd know so much more about it, and we would be able to be implementing conservation actions for either this species or maybe another species that really needs it instead of being out here just looking for it at this point. So there's a lot of kind of management challenges and decisions to be made for natural resources out there and a lot of kind of intimidating challenges. There's climate change, urban development, energy development, all this stuff out there that's pretty intimidating for a natural resource manager. But the one thing that is for sure is we can't go another 62 years without looking for magnum mantle slugs. We now can make management decisions and policy decisions uh, based on real data um, overlapping in space and time rather than extrapolating and making assumptions on data collected elsewhere.